In Space Watch, China has successfully landed a rover on Mars, joining the U.S. and the former Soviet Union as the only other countries to land on the Red Planet. The China National Space Administration says it took more than 17 minutes after landing the rover to send signals to ground controllers. Now that it's on Mars, it will collect data from the planet's soil and atmosphere. The rover is equipped with six scientific instruments, including a high-resolution topography camera. For more now, I want to bring in CBSN contributor Isaac Stonefish. Isaac is the founder of Strategy Risks, which provides research and analysis on China's impact on businesses. Isaac, usually when we are talking about U.S.-Sino relations, we're talking about uh, some of these bigger issues that feel more zero-sum. Um, it, it's nice, actually, to, to switch gears a little bit. I'm hoping you can tell us just how big of an achievement is this and what this means uh, in terms of Chinese space exploration. It is nice. This is, compared to the other stories that we often talk about, like you were saying, much more benign and a really great achievement that shows, in many ways, the ingenuity. I would argue less about the Chinese Communist Party than more about many of the brilliant Chinese scientists who made this happen. Yeah. And, and on that note, um, how does China's landing on Mars affect U.S. space exploration, global uh, space exploration? Do you think that this will prompt other countries to, to continue investing more and in, in potential scientific technologies that, that might benefit all of humankind? I hope so. There's so many comparisons drawn between the U.S. and China today to the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and it's difficult to know how much the space race that the U.S. fought and one against the Soviet Union will replicate itself with the U.S. and China today. So what China did by successfully landing a rover on Mars was something that the United States did in the 70s. So it's not a Sputnik moment, a reference to that famous satellite launch that the Soviets did in the 50s that really sped up U.S. scientific research and development. But this is certainly a sign that China is playing this game at a very, very high level. Hmm. Well, let's get into some of the nitty-gritty details. Tell us where the rover landed, how scientists were able to get it to its destination, uh, and anything more about, um, you know, in comparison, as, as you were starting to bring up, to the other, the other times that we actually had, um, had either the Soviet or the U.S. Uh, rovers there to, to try and advance some of this scientific exploration. The lander— <coughs> The lander landed on what is called Utopia Plain, and scientists in the U.S. and in China describe the landing part as seven minutes of terror or nine minutes of terror, because that's often the most challenging part of the entire process, getting the details exactly right when you have so, so many different variables to figure out to really land that landing. And what this rover seems to be wanting to do is trying to figure out that really pressing scientific question about the state of water or ice on Mars, the state of life on Mars, and whether or not the ice there could potentially sustain astronauts who are eventually going to visit Mars and then possibly at some point in the future sustain human life for the potential for any sort of colonies that might be able to be put there at some point in our lifetime or the lifetime of our children. It is exciting to think about that. Uh, and it does seem like this is the latest in many, uh, many different efforts um, from countries, from, from all different countries, to try and advance space exploration uh, and, and our understanding of the cosmos. How does China's current mission fit into sort of a, glo a, a greater perspective about what China hopes to accomplish in terms of space goals? It's very difficult to know if what Beijing says it's looking for in space, which is peaceful development with the rest of the world, is what they're actually looking for, uh, or if it is a question of being a great power, being the greatest power, and using do potential dominance in space to exert influence over other countries. I, I think, in many ways, the space race will reflect U.S.-China tensions more broadly. And the worse things are, the more contentious things will be in space, especially if the NASA space station that's due to be decommissioned in roughly 2024 
unless there's much bigger investment and push on that, it could be that the Chinese, in several years, the only ones with a functioning space station in space, in space, and that is going to be an intensely political tool for them. And the countries that they work with on that, they are going to exert a political cost for that and other parts of the relationship. Mm, interesting. May spur a little uh, healthy scientific um, competition. Isaac Stonefish, thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank you.